Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Asking the Question, Is Your Data Safe? Thanks so much for joining the webinar today, presented in partnership with our friends over at Veeam. We've got a great discussion and a really cool demo lined up for you today. Uh, before we get started, there's just a few things that you should know about the event. Uh, first off, I should mention that my name is David Davis of Axel Tech Media, and I'll be serving as your host and moderator. Uh, as always, with these events that we do here at Axel Tech, we want these to be educational. We know how tough it can be out there in the world of technology. Uh, we know that you need answers, uh, solutions to solve your technology problems and challenges, and this event is here to help. So we encourage your questions there in the questions pane of your audience console. We will be doing a Q&A session at the end of the event, and so keep those questions coming throughout. Uh, and I know with the demo especially, uh, that's going to generate a lot of questions because every time we do a demo here, uh, we get a ton of questions rolling in about, you know, how does it work? Will it do this? Will it do that? Um, I also have a best question prize on the event today to help maybe shake some of those questions loose. I'll talk about that here in just a moment. But first, I want to call your attention there to the handouts tab. It's there that you'll find three resources hand selected by today's uh, expert presenter. Uh, first off, you'll find uh, the PDF for Veeam Backup for Microsoft 365 with a product overview. Uh, you can download that resource. Uh, there's also a link to the Veeam Backup for Microsoft 365 user guide, as well as the best practices guide for Veeam Backup for Microsoft 365. Three excellent resources there in the handouts tab. And then at the end of today's webinar, I'll be announcing the winner of our Amazon $300 gift card door prize. If you're watching this on demand, of course, that drawing would have already occurred. The prize terms and conditions can be found right there in your handouts tab. And then, as I mentioned, we also have our best question prize. This is for an additional Amazon $50 gift card. What that means is you have to ask a question to be entered into the prize drawing and of course meet the terms and conditions. We'll be selecting that prize winner and contacting them after the event. All right, with that housekeeping information out of the way, it's now my pleasure to bring in and introduce you to today's expert presenter. Welcome to Mr. Christian Latoya, who is a systems engineer at Veeam. Christian, it's great to have you on the webinar. Uh, great to be here, David. Thank you for that lovely intro. And here we go. Uh, thank you, everybody out there on webinar land for joining me today. Once again, I'm Christian Latoja. I'm a systems engineer here at Veeam. And today's topic is going to be, is your data safe in Microsoft 365? I'm going to go over some common misconceptions regarding Microsoft 365's native capabilities and how to improve your business's data protection through Veeam's backup for Office 365. That is quite a mouthful, so I'm just going to refer to it as VBO for short, moving forward. <clears throat> I'm going to talk to you about why you need to back up your Microsoft 365 environment, some recommended best practices, and from Veeam's demo lab, I'm going to show you some VBO configurations, such as adding an organization, setting up a job, and going through some restore scenarios. So a little background about myself. Uh, I have 20 years IT experience. I spent most of that time on the customer side, uh, I first worked in financials such as banks and hedge funds, and then I moved over to the US Army as a contractor, and then finally I jumped over to Team Veeam. Uh, most of my career, uh, and I'm gonna date myself, there was no hosted exchange. Everything was on premises, and I'm sure many of you out there can relate. These exchange servers were heavily relied upon as it was my company's primary means of communication. So these exchange servers were essential and we implemented security we implemented redundancy we implemented means of backing them up fast forward more than a few years and now microsoft 65 hosts our exchange and the concept of backing them up somehow got lost why we went from treating exchange servers like fort knox to thinking that yeah it's microsoft 365 it's microsoft responsibilities right they've got backups right well, let's go over a few things. Microsoft 365 has got a few things, but backups is not one of them. According to this article linked below, Microsoft.com basically tells you outright that you do 
They do not back up your exchange data and they recommend using a third party solution. This uh, second quote stands out, exchange online does not provide a way to perform a traditional backup of mailboxes. So that is, there is no way to restore a mailbox. The page goes on to reference a few things Microsoft 65 offers. So let's take a look at those items. So replication, retention, litigation hold, preservation hold, archiving and e-discovery. The problem is that none of these are separate copies of your production data it, that can be used for restores, right? The majority of these are relying on the one single copy of your data. So once that copy gets corrupted or deleted or misplaced or encrypted, there goes your data. If we reference our notes from Backups 101 class, we know the three to one rule. There should be three copies of your data. One is your production, the second is going to be your backup, and the third is going to be a backup copy. So by no coincidence, VBO allows you to implement this and the rest of the 3 2, one rule. You're going to have your copies on two different forms of media, and one is going to be off-site. These numerous copies of your data and your backups allow for multiple avenues of recovery in the event of a disaster or worse. We're going to come back to that later on. This is the shared responsibility model. <clears throat> Microsoft provides you the infrastructure and the service and um, replication is there in case, let's say you're connecting to the East Coast data center and it's having trouble, it will route you to the central or the West Coast until their, your data center is back up and running. The striking bin gives you 30 to 90 days, a window to recover any deleted items. But afterwards, if you don't recover within that window, that data is gone and unrecoverable. So additionally, there's security, some administration and data regulatory roles as a data processor, et cetera, et cetera. Now for us, the user portion, if we want a secondary copy of your backups, if you want to set policy on retention to meet your company's certain legal compliance or your requirements, if you want to protect against internal or external threats like ransomware, the onus is up to us, the user. So let's break that down a little further. Accidental deletions. This happens all the time. You cannot stop human error. This needs to be mitigated. Retention policy. If Microsoft 365's retention policy is not satisfying your business needs for the 30 or 90 day window and the recycling bin won't cut it, you'll need a backup solution. Internal security threats. So what if a malicious actor or malicious worker deletes essential SharePoint files, OneDrive files, emails? You'll have to be able to recover from that. External threats such as your OneDrive or SharePoint data being corrupted, deleted, attacked by ransomware, malware. You have to be able to recover for the goodness of your business. Legal compliance. Do you have any requirements that need to be addressed for your particular business? for some regulatory roles that demand a certain amount of years. Next is managing hybrid deployments on integrations. Let's say you're migrating from on-prem to hybrid, or you have a hosted, I'm sorry, on-prem to hosted, and maybe you have a hybrid current solution. If you're going from one to the other, it'd be fantastic to have a safety net almost in case items get lost and items get deleted, items go sideways. And finally, Teams structure. Can your business live without the restoration of individual group chats in Teams? If you have a backup solution, this will greatly help all these items. This is the this is the retention policy regarding Exchange, SharePoint, and OneDrive. So you notice that majority start at thirty days, and maybe a grace period for SharePoint and OneDrive. The data afterwards, if you don't recover it in time, maybe after the 31st day or the 91st day, the data will be deleted. You won't be able to recover it. However, through Beam's backup for Office Microsoft 365, you'll be able to set a retention to fit your organization needs and as you see fit. And here is a simple diagram of VBO backing up Microsoft 365 hosted and on-prem. backed up through Veeam's VBO server onto object storage in the cloud or on-prem storage with 
object storage available to us there. And by using backup copy jobs, allowing us to send a copy of our backups to Glacier, Amazon S3 Glacier Storage, as well as Azure uh, Archive. By using Veeam's Explorers, you'll be able to right-click and restore Grammarly back to production, save, export, and send via email. I'm going to be demoing that shortly. All right, here is Veeam's demo lab. <clears throat> so uh, let's talk about setup. If you've got on-prem storage and whether you've got hosted in the cloud Microsoft 365 or on-premises exchange, if you want to save your backups to your on-prem storage, I would recommend uh, installing VBO on a physical or virtual machine on-premises. However, if you've got Microsoft 365 hosting your services and you want to keep your backups strictly on the cloud, it wouldn't make sense for you to have an on-prem VBO server. I would recommend installing VBO on a virtual machine in Azure or AWS completing a computing instance uh, in order to take care of your backups. It wouldn't make sense to backup down on-premises and then move it right back into the cloud. Additionally, both Azure and AWS Marketplace have a VBO available to download and deploy if you want to go that route as well. Uh, VBO deployments generally for 5,000 users or less, you can have your VBO server, proxy, and local repository all in one. And as your environment grows, we can separate those services out to different servers in order to keep up performance. Either way, if you go on the VBO route installed locally or in an instance in the cloud, this is what you're going to look like. On the left-hand side, we see that we have two organizations already added. However, if you yourself wanted to add one, you just go ahead and right-click, Add Organization. And from here, we can see the different deployments available to us. We have Hosted, we have Hybrid, we have On-Premises. And we can select or deselect whatever services we want saved. Default region is set unless you have a compelling reason to select these other regions. We're going to go ahead and register a new Azure AD application. We're going to install self signed cert, although you can provide your own if you'd like. And we're going to use this copy code to go to this URL to click complete authentication and have our organization added to the left hand side. Now for backup infrastructure. This is where we add proxies and the backup repository. The proxy does the heavy lifting, directing traffic to and from the repo for backups and restores. This one's pretty straightforward. Name the server, enter your credentials, and it's been added. On-prem repository, the repository is our fancy word for where the backups are gonna be stored is going to be tied for the proxy. So we can go ahead. So when you create your proxy, it's going to have the storage already on there as a server. Right click, add backup repository. Select the proxy, select the path. We have the ability here to offload backup data to object storage and include encryption. And this is where we set the retention policy. It can be specified number of days, several years, or forever. Once you hit finish, you'll be able to add that backup repository. Similarly, for object storage, we can go ahead and use the GUI to add object storage here. And we have these storage types to select from. Here, we're going to get plain Jane Azure, Mr. Blobity Blob, select the account that we need to connect, then the region, container, select the folder, hit finish, and you will have an object storage repository. We're going to move on into creating a backup job. Oh, I should have mentioned, and this is my fault, 
I, uh, I have a lisp. I talk fast and I slur my words occasionally. So if there's something that was unclear, please uh, let's put that on the questions and I'm gonna circle back to the questions and answer that toward uh, the end of this webinar. Okay, back to the backup job. We're gonna go ahead and right click the organization we want backed up. And we have the ability, we have the ability to back up the entire organization. But that might get a little unruly. So we're going to go ahead and select the ability to add users individually, groups, sites, or teams. Here, we're able to add through M365 groups and security groups. So I'm just going to click around. In this page, we are allowed to exclude certain users and groups. So I don't think we need to uh, back up any of the service accounts. Here, set the proxy, select the repository. Scheduling is straightforward. And there is our backup job. So once you run this backup job, uh, it's going to be a full, and everything afterwards is going to be an incremental. Why? Because the backup data is tracked via JET database for on-prem storage and JetBlue database for object storage. The traditional methods of running a full and an incremental with occasional fulls will not be necessary as the databases will keep track of the backed up items and retain them based on their retention. So now let's get to the good stuff, the restores. I'm going to go ahead and click this organization here, and we'll notice that there's only the ability to launch an Exchange Explorer. Why? Because only Exchange was backed up. However, if we go to this organization up here, we have the ability to launch Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive, and Teams Explorers. I'm going to go ahead and launch the Veeam Explorer for Exchange. This, the, these explorers were programmed, sorry, were created by Veeam developers from the ground up. They were not bought, they are not third party, and they are fully endorsed by Microsoft. We're going to go ahead and load up the data store here. We have the ability to restore the entirety back into production, but that's a bit crazy. Uh, we wouldn't be doing that in actuality. However, we also have, but we do have the capability. We also have the capability of creating and saving to an existing PSD. But in a more realistic sense, we're going to drill down and help Aria Stark out. Once again, we can right click and restore her entire mailbox back into production or to a different mailbox, as well as to export to a new or existing PSD. But in a more common sense, we're going to most likely get a request to restore individual emails or folders. So what we can do here is at the folder level, same thing, restore back into production, back to a different mailbox, to a new or existing PSD. For here, I'm just gonna click around to individual emails and show you that we can also restore back to production, to a different mailbox, new or existing PSD, we can even send the mail as send these messages as a mail. But for here, I'm going to save to my desktop. And here we are. Um, let me know, guys out there, if you want me to show something called compare with production and show change items only. If you guys are interested, please put that in the questions. I'll circle back to it. But basically, if you get a request from, let's say, maybe a higher up and they deleted something, they don't know what it is they deleted, you'll be able to use these two buttons in conjunction, compare with production, then show change items only to see what may have been deleted recently from production in comparison to this backup. If you guys want to see that, please go ahead and throw that on the questions slash chat. Back, going on to the restore scenarios. Here we are at we're going to go with SharePoint. Let that load up. It's thinking about it. Thinking hard, I guess. Oh, here we are. All right. This is our SharePoint Explorer. We're going to go ahead on and pick on House Lannister. Let's restore the site back to production, restore site to a different uh, SharePoint here at a more granular level, we can expand these out and see what we have to restore. Let's go take a look at some documents. Oh, looks like 
You can go ahead and pick a few here. We have the ability to right click, restore back to production to a different SharePoint site. We could send it via email, but here we're gonna save it as a zip file. To the desktop you go, and there they are. Next, right click, and we're gonna explore the OneDrive options. Again, this is gonna be a Beam Explorer for Microsoft OneDrive. There we are. We have the ability to restore all these OneDrives over the top. That would be a little crazy. We have also the option to keep copies so that we won't completely overwrite everything. Granularly, let's go and help Gray Worm out. It looks like he's got a lot of project plans and needs some restoring. We can go ahead and pick however many or few we want. Again, we can send it straight to production, overwrite everything, or we can keep a copy. I, I forget what the nomenclature is, but it's going to be the file name underscore restore or underscore copy. We can also send the document, copy the document, but here we're going to save these files to my desktop. And there they are. And I'm going to continue beating this dead horse to death by going to the Teams Explorer. This time we're going to pick a point in time. Let's go to Halloween. Maybe there's some candy in there. Launch that browser. Nice little air, uh, alert. Make us aware of any possible uh, egress. All right. So we can restore all the teams we can we or we can restore individual teams so here we're going to go with the house of dragon fantastic series i don't know if you guys were able to watch it we can restore the team we can restore the channel we could go down to individual files and hey mr john snow let's export you to the desktop and here we are mr snow fantastic you are coming back i hope so um, I showed you some example of how to restore as an administrator using the console. However, VBO does come with a self-service as well. So it looks like I'm already signed as at Sansa Stark, who is just a regular plain Jane user. And she has the capabilities of looking at her backups in regards for her mailbox, archive, SharePoint, and OneDrive. So we're going to go ahead and she's got a bunch of project plans too. We're gonna to go ahead and select it as Sansa. Uh, we're gonna to add to the restore list. We could also just directly restore them. And we're gonna let that chug along. We're gonna overwrite wherever this is gonna go. All right. So this is something that uh, is a nice to have. You guys know your users groups better than I. Maybe you've got a really solid bunch of um, end users who can greatly benefit from this. Maybe you can take some cycles off your SAs and your backup team by allowing your users to uh, use the self-service portal. However, if you're in an environment uh, that this would cause more trouble than help, you can go ahead and skip this part and you won't be able to, have to you won't have to uh, implement this at all. I do have to mention that this uh, portal is only available for hosted Microsoft 365 environments. Let's see, I talked a good deal. I'm just going to talk about a few common best practices. So these best practices can be found in the M365 best practices guide. This is available to you, but it's not the same thing as the help center guide, which is a, an encyclopedia of how to use this fantastic product. But just to go over a few things under uh, best practices, um, one, creating groups. So I mentioned this earlier. Where did you go, friend? Don't mind me, just think oh, I was here the entire time. We have the ability to create a copy job here. So um, once this 365 job is complete, you can go ahead and right click add to copy job. But of 
course it's not there as it already exists. So we'll go ahead and edit and show you that you can target another repository to have a separate copy and complete that three, two, one um, backup rule. You can run the backups immediately after the original backup is completed. You can run this out of schedule or you can run this periodically as you see fit. Now back to those groups, excuse me. So we only have three groups here. And if you want to jam everything into one gigantic organization, uh, one gigantic backup, you can do that. But we recommend um, splitting those backups into something a little more uh, manageable. So let's say you can do a Teams only backup. So you're going to go ahead and come here, hit edit. And let's say we'll chop this down to only do Teams. And then we'll create another backup where we'll only do SharePoint. Or we'll create another backup where we only do Mail. Perhaps you, and I highly suggest this, you use the Groups feature to have Microsoft 365 security groups split your users out and to like divisions. Let's say you are a school, you have a students only backup or a staff only backup or an alumni only backup. You can go ahead and do that and set those jobs, split them up into a little more sizable chunks. Um, let me talk a little bit about storage. For on-prem storage, it's recommend to not use deduplication devices and to not use SMB instead. Or we recommend using direct attached or fiber channel sand block storage over iSCSI. Additionally, this repository should be based on NTFS uh, formatting with no duplication. Uh, if you want to take care of your three, two, one uh, rule where uh, one of the copies is going to be uh, immutable, you I would suggest backing up the VBO server in your Veeam's VBR server, Veeam's backup re uh, replication server. And from there, you can make a backup copy job to immutable storage, as well as to tape, further completing the three, two, one, zero rule. And one thing I can suggest doing if you guys are thinking about what the, what the size could possibly be for this, I'm going to show bring up this calculator we have. So uh, have your global admin login to your Microsoft 365 um, admin page and look up the total size of your mailboxes, OneDrive, SharePoint, your weekly change rates, uh, and all these other numbers you can plug and chug in here with your retention policy, and it will spit out the cost per month for compute and object storage in the cloud. It also will give you some local repository um, estimates as well. Notices there is a disparity where uh, object storage has practically half or less than half uh, the amount of local storage. This is because for object storage, you get a good amount of compression. Infrastructure sizing, we like um, to keep the VBO server altogether if it's a certain size. However, as your numbers increase and it calls for a larger number of servers, this will increase here. It'll increase to maybe another proxy uh, or so. And this will give you nice details of how much storage is being taken up by OneDrive, SharePoint, primary mailboxes, et cetera. This is a common question that I see with my customers. Uh, you know, what if we do this? What if we change the retention? It's all available here. And if you want to cross-check it, you are more than welcome to go to your Azure login and test out their Azure calculator there as well. So um, I don't know if, um, David, are you there? I don't know if anybody's asking about that uh, one capability that uh, I had to compare with production show change items. Did anybody ask about that? We did, yeah. Did I see here at least one person, Michael, asked about, uh, please demo compare with production and show changed only. Cool. Michael, this one's for you, bud. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, pick on John Snow again. We're going to go ahead and compare with production. Oh. Uh, you know what? I think I timed out. I'm going to have to close this. Very sorry about that. Very sorry, guys. I'm going to have to close this out. I was talking a little too much. Time me out. Uh, shame on me. All right, here we go. We're still connected. Right click. We're going to launch our exchange. Explore. Explore. 
We're going to go down to Mr. Snow. He knows nothing. We're going to check out his inbox. And now, compare with production. We're going to authenticate this AD, AD Azure app. Copy code. Login. John Snow. Yes, yes, yes. And let's uh, let's hop on John's um, Outlook and let's uh, let's delete something. All right, Salesforce from Sunday. We're going to go ahead and highlight that. Oops, accidental delete. All right. So now we're going to connect this Azure AD application. Mm -hmm. Show changed items only. So it's going to compare this backup with our production on the right hand side. And so this uh, realistic scenario would be, again, like I mentioned, uh, high, higher up. This is, hey, SA uh, backup guys, I deleted something. I don't remember what it was, who it was from, but it was important. Please go get it. So you can give that person the onus of parsing through an entire PSD uh, to recover, or you are going to have to do it. Or you can use these two buttons, compare with production, compare change items only. My, my, John Snow, you've deleted a lot. <laughs> I'm going to talk to my demo guys about this. Maybe we can clean this up just a little bit. He's trying to get rid of all his secrets. I know. You're not supposed yeah. to know anything, John. So here we are back to Salesforce. Uh, where is this bad boy from? It is from Sunday. There it is. Right click. Let's restore it back to production. We got to do that. We got to keep things nice and authenticated here. We're going to do it a second time. John Snow. We're going to restore. Let's check it. There we are. Back into production. Awesome. So you, the SA, the backup guy, won't have to dig through years worth of emails to look for a needle a haystack i mean the uh search option in um in uh these ex explorers are fantastic but it, you know this is going to save you a lot of admin work over the top using <clears throat> the compare with production and show changed items uh only um i'm going to open this up to the uh questions uh dave if uh, you got any out there please let them rip yeah, absolutely. I see uh, over 12 questions here in the queue, at least for you so far. If you have a question for Christian, now's the time to get it in. Uh, don't forget about the best question prize as well. I don't think most people need encouragement for that because there's obviously a lot of great questions rolling in. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with this one here. They're asking, are there egress fees when creating backups? No, there are not. Um, when you create a backup, whether on-prem or you're saving it to uh, storage, uh, S3 storage, um, you do not have any egress fees. What happens is it's, it's very akin to uh, having your Outlook client look at your emails. Uh, you do not have any egress fees if that's something that you are worried about, no. Excellent, that's nice. Um, another one here they wanna know is, is it a separate license to backup Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive, and Teams? No, um, if you have a Microsoft 365 Live license, uh, you're afforded those <coughs> uh, services, right? Uh, and likewise, um, Veeam is looking for that Microsoft 365 license, just one. So let's say uh, Jon Snow, he's only going to consume one license uh, and he'll be able, will be able to back up and restore um, his Exchange, his SharePoint, his OneDrive, his um, Teams without uh, extra licensing. Nice, nice. What about shared mailboxes? Someone wants to know, can you back up shared mailboxes? This is a question that I hear all the time. I, I'm, I'm guessing because Microsoft 365 doesn't have a license for shared uh, mailboxes. The answer is 100% yes, Veeam can back up shared mailboxes and it doesn't consume a license. So if you're an organization that's got a, a few mailboxes, you should be good to go. Very nice. Um, okay, lots of great audience questions here. What about this one from Andrew who wants to know, how hard is it to restore an individual Outlook cloud email at a particular point in time? Oh, 
Uh, easy peasy, buddy. I mean, I'm going to jump back into my Explorer. So here we are. We opened the latest one, but I have no problem showing you a point of time restore. Uh, we're going to go here. Uh, we're going to go exchange point in time. I went back to uh, Halloween for, for giggles. Uh, but we can go back as far as we want here. Let's go to September 1st. Uh, we're going to go ahead and browse. It's going to open up the Explorer. It's going to churn away a little bit. And it's going to be just as, uh, I don't want to put speed on it, but it's going to be just as simple as restoring you, what you saw with the entire, um, the latest point in time, my mistake. So uh, again, I'm going to pick an Arya. Uh, yeah, no, let's stop picking Arya. Let's go with Grey Worm, Mr. Worm. We're going to go to his inbox and we got an important one from Jon Snow. <laughs> Restore it back into production. <laughs> Or to a different mailbox to a new or existing psd we can save to the desktop which was what i've been doing we'd also send it via email so all these options are still available to us i know uh, some competitors i'm not going to name names require uh to restore the entire uh mailbox just for one thing that's it's a bit much probably time consuming i wouldn't know i'm not uh, an expert on my competitors i try to stay up on my beam and beam only but here we are save to the desktop Mr. Warren, where are you? Where'd you go? Restore report. What's that? Yeah, 237. There you go. So restore report from John Snow. Perfect. I hope that answers uh, his question. It's pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, that's one of the things that uh, BBO prides itself on, ease of use. Excellent. Very easy. And here's another interesting one. Can we restore data from the backups for data beyond 90 days? Yes. So your retention policy uh, is set uh, at the repository level. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and show you that. So for this particular repository, once it gets targeted, everything backed up is going to be 99,999 days. That's a lot, but you're probably going to use one of these years or keep forever. So you'll be able to restore however back your retention policy is, if it's two years. You can go to two years. Um, if it's two years in a day, well, not so much luck. That's it's going to be based off your retention policy. So yes, definitely pass the thirty to ninety days, which are um, native to Microsoft three sixty five. I hope that answers your question. If not, circle back. Nice. Uh, Harvey wants to know: Can this help me to identify sensitive data in Microsoft three sixty five? What I have and where is it? Hmm. I like your uh, compartmentalize your. Uh, I'm not Personal, sure yeah. if, if one more time. Sorry about that. I was talking personally about identifiable that. information. PII. So like uh, labels, pretty much, right? Like um, that's going to be. I'm going to have to get back to you on that. That's an interesting one because. Let me see here. Let me move my mind up. <laughs> Off the top of my head, I'm going to say I'm not 100% sure. At this point, I would have to dig through the best practices or the help center uh, that I gave earlier today, specifically uh, looking for classifications such as PII. But off the top of my head, I'm not 100% sure we can. We can search pretty well. We can <sighs> restore pretty well. But for chopping it up into certain classifications. I think the onus is still on the user, unfortunately. Got it. Okay. Uh, here's said, another one. Sorry. That being said, um, my, I think my, uh, information's available, uh, on, on the uh, screen, they can go ahead and email me these, uh, these questions, or maybe I can get the questions from you and circle back to, uh, the user, because I definitely want to answer that and find out myself. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We'll send you over all the questions after the fact, after the fact here. Um, another question, who has access to the data that's in Microsoft 365? And maybe that's a Microsoft question. As in like outside, uh, yeah, like external. We back up, like yeah, we back up our data. I'm sorry, I keep getting go going. Dave, please, please go ahead, David. Um, I, I'm reading it as like we back up our data to Microsoft, or we I guess we store our you know email and files in Microsoft 365. This is really just 
pulling it down. Um, if you want to protect that data, I mean, you can protect it on premises with Veeam, right? But you can also protect it in other clouds. Is that true? Uh, yes, that's right. Um, you can save to object re uh, storage repositories. So that can be Azure, AWS. I believe there was an option for IBM Cloud. There is also S3 compatible storage, which is on premises. And if you're there is going to be security for accessing that. It's not going to be wide open. And for your local storage, it's going to be as secure as you uh, make it to be. You're going to have your physical security. You're going to have your um, uh, security on your computer, on the virtual machine. So th that's going to be pretty secure. It's not Veeam, if that's the question is going, Veeam doesn't have any access to your data. Um, Microsoft hosts your data, but it also has security in place so that uh, they don't access it. And others who aren't you, the users, won't access it. But that being said, I'm not 100% sure I'm grasping the question. So uh, sorry. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, we may need to follow up with some clarification on that one. Um, and I think that also helps to answer maybe one of the other questions here. They're asking about um, what other object storage is supported. Is Wasabi uh, storage supported, which I know is S3 compatible storage. And you said there are other S3 compatible storage options um, that may be supported. Something to look into. Yeah. Yes. So Wasabi uh, should be uh, uh, supported because they are... I can't, I can't say I've got favorites, but I do like Wasabi a lot. So Wasabi will be, uh, 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 you, you can store to Wasabi. We do have a list. Let me, uh, let me bring that list up. I hope it's been updated. <laughs> is Wasabi the only one that they had requested? Uh, question back because it is, it doesn't have ingress fees and have egress fees. It's, uh, it's $6 a terabyte. This uh, this part, this portion of the uh, the talk was sponsored by Wasabi. <laughs> but yes, it is it is a very good um, uh, service to have uh, and to use for Microsoft three sixty five. Excellent, yeah. And there's another kind of similar question from Alex, who wants to know: uh, Is there a backup server in Canada? I, I take that to mean, can I back up my data to a Canadian, say, object storage and the answer to that is yes. Is that true? Wherever you configure your cloud storage, mm -hmm. that is correct. Yes, as long as there's, we can get to it, you you can store to it. I don't think there's any uh, Canadian and U.S. Uh, embargoes going right now. <laughs> we all right. set in Canada. Right. Um, does Veeam have plans to expand this kind of capability to uh, protect data in Google? Say like Google yes. Apps, Google Docs. I can't. I understood. Thank you very much. So I, I'm not in the business of selling what's not available yet. But uh, a little bird tells me that sometime early Q1, there's going to be a new version of M365. And every time we add a new version, there's more and more capabilities, more vendors, more um, services. And it's always getting better. Uh, if you visit our forums often, and you go ahead and do a feature request, we listen to that. It doesn't get buried. We go ahead and note it. Um, but it goes by kind of popularity. So if more and more people are, are, are really hankering for Google, make that noise in the forum. They're going to note it. They actually note it. And if not this version, perhaps the next version, you're going to have the ability to uh, uh, save to, to, to Google, et cetera, if it's not available currently. Excellent. I like that. Sneaky. That's exciting. Yeah. Um, another question here uh, from Joe, are the files only protected if they are in OneDrive? Uh, so like, oh, the, so the data has to be in OneDrive for it to be targeted. I mean, if you have the data in your SharePoint, we can, we can back up your SharePoint. If it's in your OneDrive contained within your OneDrive of your Microsoft 365, we'll be able to back it up, yes. Uh, if it exists in your exchange, it'll be able to back it up. Uh, teams, same thing with your chats and your groups. And yes, we will, if they exist in those services, you know, if you've got a file in OneDrive, yeah, we will be able to back it up. There's no, um, certain limitations or anything like that. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, here's another interesting one. 
can the cost of my Office 365 or Microsoft 365 be reduced by deploying a lower level plan and then leveraging a solution like this? A lower level plan, as in like a Microsoft 365 licensing. I think that's right. what there's like certain levels that allow you to do lit hold or something like if you want to do a preservation hold or something like that that requires to have a certain licensing. I mean, I don't, I don't concern myself with Microsoft 365 licensing. It's either yes or no. Can't, do, is there a Microsoft 365 license? Yes. Beam can back up. So I'm not sure what you guys are paying for that extra licensing, but if you have the a license, Microsoft as our VBO will be able to uh, back it up for you guys. So maybe that'll be a cost savings for you. I, I hope so. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see another good one. Oh, here's this goes back to your original point here. I, I think you made at the start of the presentation, uh, which is uh, why should I consider using a third party backup service since everything is included in Microsoft 365? Okay, uh, maybe uh, you weren't there for that beginning portion. I have no problem circling back to it. So, um, oh, I, I've got the uh, slides here, if you don't mind. So, uh, went back a little too much. Here we go. So, these are available and built into Microsoft 365. These are the native capabilities, right? Replication, retention, lit hold, preservation hold. Great. However, the majority of these are just one copy. Of your backup like if you replicate and you delete something here it's deleted at the replicated site you won't be able to go to that replicated site and dig it up right if you um something goes past your retention policy you know 30 to 90 days and you miss it outside of that window gone you no chance of getting that back so yes uh things are built in but backups are not built in let me go ahead to the very top here we are. It, this is directly from Microsoft.com. Um, that link is, I double checked, uh, it is still active. You can go ahead and it shows it, point in time restoration of mailbox items, not in scope. They recommend using a third party solution. So I mean, I think it tells you right there, it, it does get off, Microsoft 365 does offer a lot of things, but having the capability to back up to a point in time is, is not gonna be one of them. And it's really your responsibility as an end user to really watch your watch your stuff. Um, I, I can't claim this quote. It's going to be one of my uh, my other uh, teammates that I work with from uh, uh, St. Louis. His quote is: uh, "M365 gives you the refrigerator; it keeps it cold. However, the beer is on you. If it's stale, it's all your fault." So. <laughs> Really, you got to be responsible for your own data because Microsoft 365 is helping us out by having this an amazing service for us. However, if things go belly up and your business essential files are gone, what are you going to do? I mean, you can yell to the heavens, give us back my files or ransomware. If they encrypt your stuff, what are you going to do? You can't, you're going to be trying to find some of the internet. And by then it doesn't matter. It's still encrypted. You're going to be able to have to, uh, fall back on your restores and it's got to be absolute you know the uh the sun is hot the water's wet my backups work you got to be able to do this for the um livelihood of your business that's what i have to say about that very well said well said um mark has a good question here he says that we're looking to replace our current backup system for both cloud and on-prem uh, how does veeam compare to the competition and i know that's probably tough to answer in <laughs> a few sentences, but uh, what really makes Veeam unique? So let me um, put this out there. Veeam does not have any vendor lock-in, right? So you're going to have to ask your vendors that you go to. You go to a competitor and it's like, hey, you guys are, are really good priced. Uh, it's not that bad. One, if I stop paying you, what happens to our backups? Are they going to still have it available to you? Or are they going to give it to you? If this uh, competitor is giving you storage, where are you going to store those backups it, once they try to hand it off to you? It's, it's going to go anywhere. Um, that's one important thing that uh, the majority of our competitors won't do well against because they're happy to do business with you and offer the service at whatever price point. And then all of a sudden you want to leave and their backups 
your backups are gone. You, they, are they going to give it to you? You, uh, you should, that's something you should definitely ask in your next upcoming meetings when shopping around. The next thing is ease of use. I went through pretty uh, 25 minutes, how to set up uh, your jobs, how to restore at a granular level. Um, I can't say for all of our competitors, but a good portion of them have to require the entire mailbox to be restored in order to just get one or two or uh, another one. I, you know, again, I don't name names um, that require an entire PST to be cut, basically the same thing in order to just get one. Here, um, with incredible ease of use, you can do it. Your backup admins can do it. And we have a nice little portal for even your users to do it uh, once they get trained up. So that's how and why I would pick uh, Veeam over the com uh, competition. Very nice. Uh, good question here. What type of air gapped air gap is used to protect the data, or is there an air gap to oh. protect the data from, for example, getting you know infected with ransomware? Yeah. The backup data. So uh, right now, uh, because of the how the database lines up, there is no direct immutability. We do have um, a workaround where the VBR server Veeam's backup and replication server will back up the VBO server and you have can have a backup copy job to make that copy immutable. Um, you also have the ability to do a pack copy job to a tape. And you know, once that's removed from the system, that is technically air gap. You can send it to whatever vendors or you could just have it literally lying outside of the system and that will be air gapped. Um, what's nice about this is once you back up the VBO server, you don't have to restore the entirety of it. The VBR server will realize, hey, that's a VBO server, cool. I've got a bunch of explorers that we could plug and chug these backups into and you can restore from there instead of having to restore your entire VBO server in order to uh, get to your backups and restores. That being said, like I said, uh, a little birdie told me that early January uh, 2023, there's gonna be a new version. So let's keep an eye out on that. Maybe there's gonna be a little surprise. Maybe there's going to be some immutability in there. I don't like selling things that aren't completely out yet. So let's uh, keep an eye out on that video. <laughs> Excellent. I like it. Uh, and you did say that this will back up any uh, Microsoft 365 uh, level subscription. You don't have to have a, have a certain level. You know what? That just keeps coming up. And I'm going to say 100% yes. But uh, yeah, like I've never heard of the guy's going, ah, oh, I've had, you know, the school or the education and it won't work. It's always been there. Is there a license? Yes. We, Microsoft, uh, VBO will back it up. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Well, I think we've covered pretty much all the questions that are out there, unless there's anything additional that you want to cover, Christian. It looks like we're starting to reach the top of the hour here. Uh, any any final words or any final points that you want to make? Uh, that's all set. I'm all webinared out. I hope you guys enjoyed the talk. I'll hopefully see you guys in uh, future webinars. Thank you for having me, Dave. Ab absolutely. Yeah. Thanks so much, Christian. A really excellent demo. Great presentation. I enjoyed it. I learned a lot. I know the audience did as well. Thank you for being on. Um, before we wrap up, I do want to bring up this poll question for everyone here on the screen and get your feedback on this. And the poll question is, what future topics would you like us to cover on the Data Bytes series? Uh, we've covered so many uh, really cool topics here over the last year. Uh, we wanna get your feedback. Uh, are you looking for more ransomware topics, backup and recovery, a more Microsoft 365 specific uh, what about hybrid cloud? Or if there's a, another topic that's not on the list right there related to protecting data, uh, drop it in the questions pane because we do want to get your feedback. All right, I see the responses rolling in. I'm not going to say what they are because I don't want to taint the results. I see a couple folks who said other, so please drop your comment there in the questions pane. Uh, we want to shape future presentations to your needs. Uh, Cheryl out there in the audience said, 
It was an excellent demo by Christian. Edward said, great presentation. Uh, Philip said, thank you. Michael said, thank you. I uh, really appreciate all that feedback. Uh, and I'll leave up the poll there while I announce the winner of our Amazon $300 gift card. This is going out to Dean Shake from Missouri. Congratulations, Dean Shake from Missouri. And we'll be reaching out to our best question prize winner as well after the event. All right, and then last thing before we go, don't forget about the handouts tab. It's there that you can get an overview of Veeam Backup for Microsoft 365, uh, find out more information on best practices and the full documentation. All right, thanks for your feedback there on the poll. It's time to wrap up today's event. Thank you, of course, to Veeam for supporting us. I hope everyone learned a lot. Uh, visit veeam.com for more information and have a great day. See you next time. Bye-bye.